It's an alarming reality, a cyclical life of crime here on the island inundated with repeat offenders. With one in every 25 people on Guam under community supervision, an overcrowded prison, a growing number of pretrial defendants and an increase in juvenile offenders, Chief Justice Robert Torres understands that as gatekeepers, the judiciary has plenty of work ahead to keep Guam safe. It's become clear that our traditional approaches of criminal justice are just not enough. Our goal has to be to treat the source of what leads people into the justice system rather than to just punish criminal conduct. And while the traditional take on criminal justice no longer works, evidence shows what does work. This includes community-based programs for mental health, substance abuse treatments, anger management programs, family counseling, education and employment programs, as well as probation and supervision. Keeping with moving forward, the judiciary is pushing efforts for better accessibility to justice. Currently, the judiciary is working to cater to veterans with the establishment of the Veterans Treatment Court by early next year, to cater to the underprivileged with the beginnings of certifications for limited licensed legal technicians, and to cater to those who don't speak English with the creation of the Court Interpreter Registry Program, which already includes 40 contracted interpreters in 15 languages and dialects. This pool is expected to grow as the judiciary has partnered with the Guam Community College to develop an interpreter certification program. Keeping with better access to justice, Torres says as the judiciary embraces technology, they're saving time, money, travel, as well as increasing safety and security. Now court clientele can make their payments online and defendants and off-island witnesses can appear via video teleconference. Despite all these advances, the business of administering justice isn't cheap. As Torres explained, the judiciary submitted its budget request for next fiscal year on Thursday, which he says is 3.9 million more than what was requested prior. He justifies the increase, stating that 60 percent of the hike represents mandates, including the implementation of the Competitive Wage Act, as well as the need to reinforce security both physically and electronically. Justice is something that should never be rationed. The cost of attempting to do so will be far higher in the long run than the savings that can be realized now. In closing, Torres asked the community to take pride in the state of the judiciary. The role of the judiciary has evolved substantially over the years, from simply deciding cases to helping address the underlying problems and alleviate the impacts of those problems. We have embraced that broader role, and I believe we're doing it well. And in the midst of these changes, I ask you to reflect on the values of our system of government and the critical role that the judiciary plays in the lives of every citizen. The people of Guam can truly be proud of the judiciary's ability to adapt and modernize. And this is just the beginning. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco. The state of the judiciary dress was well received by many in the audience, including Governor Nick Bozicalvo, who's most anxious to see how the court serves our island's veterans. And, personnel and then, of course, in the other areas in terms of focusing on some of the issues regarding our veterans and, and understanding that with all of them coming back uh, from the military, how do we move forward in, in ensuring that, uh, again, with, because of the unique nature of a soldier, uh, that justice dispensed uh, in, in what I consider a fair way. It was also a thumbs up from Senator Frank Hagan Jr., who was most impressed by the judiciary's efficient use of technology. I'm particularly interested not only in the efficiency and using of use of the technology, but also the establishment, the official establishment of the Veterans Court. We certainly look forward to that support being extended to our community. But what's the judiciary of Guam without the Guam Police Department? As Chief of Police Fred Bredalio says, he's very proud of the partnership between the agencies. In improving the way we do business. I think it was a great presentation from Justice Torres, uh, uh, especially the emphasis of uh, collaboratively working with all the stakeholders and the community partners and ensuring that uh, everybody is um, going to be um, uh, confident in the judiciary. And, um, you know, especially with the challenges that Guam faces in terms of... Um, ensuring that uh, uh, court security uh, is taken care of, ensuring that a lot of um, 
the um, defendants, you know, uh, you know, uh, they're treated individually and the circumstances of how, you know, they're brought before justice is going to be uh, different. Also partnering with the courts, Guam Community College President Dr. Mary Okada. We're very pleased to be working in partnership with the uh, Guam Judiciary to establish the uh, requirements necessary to provide moderate and low income uh, individuals with the uh, support that they need in addressing their legal issues. Um, in addition to that, uh, the um, continuing uh, support that we have uh, for the interpreter program to address the uh, interpreting requirements and needs of our community.